In the Gospel of Matthew, we see the judgment of the nations when the Son of Man comes in glory in the separation of the sheep from the goats. Those invited to inherit the kingdom prepared for them from the foundation of the world, the sheep at his right hand, are those that actually practiced the corporal works of mercy by feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, tending to the sick and visiting the imprisoned, by showing mercy to the least of their brethren, they are showing mercy to the king himself. Now those to his left, the goats that weren't really the greatest of all time, the ones that did not practice these acts of mercy, they are cursed and sent into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. They will go to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Now the shepherd protects the weak, but he also seems to be harsh, the strong and comfortable. The king issues his judgment, but what surprises us is how he personally identifies with the weak. Now we are sheep, we are vulnerable, but it doesn't mean that we're meant to be irresponsible. We are called to imitate the good shepherd in caring for others, identifying Christ in our service of others. The exercise of the corporal works of mercy is a powerful witness to the Christian life. And to this list, the church also includes the merciful act of burying the dead. Now, social justice is an essential part of the Christian life, but it would be a mistake to reduce the whole of the Christian life to just these works alone. In other parts of the Gospels and in the New Testament, particularly those that deal with you know, end-of-world situations, we learn that fidelity to the commandments, profession of faith in Jesus Christ, and belonging to Him in a particular way are essential too. The object here is not just about doing nice things, but rather doing concrete things in order to serve Christ Himself. Christianity is more than just the occasional holiday donation or how we vote on immigration or the justice system. In fact, the most vulnerable tend to be those who are at the beginning stages of life from conception and those who are palliative near the end of their life. What is required is a total commitment to serving Christ in a practical way. We were created to love God and our neighbor, and this is why the righteous inherit the kingdom prepared for them for the foundation of the world. The accursed depart to eternal fire that wasn't necessarily prepared for them because they failed to live up to this primary vocation to love and serve God and their neighbor. Now, there are many popular institutions or kingdoms of this world, if you will, that engage in some works of charity and social justice, but you know, they can't expect an eternal reward if their motivations and goals are not Christocentric. True Christians, on the other hand, serve Christ for Christ in tangible ways and even spiritual ways as well. We don't avoid our responsibility or redefine mercy in order to terminate life before birth or a natural death. We know that service and mercy is difficult. It's messy. But we show compassion by suffering with others, with Christ. We seek the kingdom by explicitly serving Christ in this life in witnessing to Christ's service of the most vulnerable, for it ultimately it is to Him that all glory belongs, now and forever.